Now I can say happy rush hour, everybody. Um, not actually too bad at the moment. So, uh, out of the blue before, out of the blues of suburbia, I should say, um, I made a video for Earth Restoration um, Camps, and I think this is the Earth Restoration Community Group, but, um, you know, I suggested an idea about letting lawns grow back, and um, it might have just kind of seemed out of nowhere, and the journey that I'm on um, started out, and I still hold it the most, uh, mostly against cars themselves because of their violent nature both to the earth and to us which we're part of the earth I believe um, and something that's become so normal so much part of the background that we uh, accept it as if it's always been there um, but it hasn't always been there and I don't believe it can always be there and the rate at which it's been growing and ecosystems have been dying back, I think there's a lot more than just a correlation, an uh, inverse correlation between cars and biomass on Earth. So um, I am doing a little bit of plugging about what my event is actually about. Um, right now I've turned it into kind of being a pipeline warrior, but um, here's the flyer. So I'm gonna leave it there. Okay, good, it looks like it's focusing. So this is the flyer. I haven't handed out to that many people. I don't even have that many copies. Um, but this is what Carlos Carlos, when I, I created this back in May and I started towards the end of May. So cars and unnecessary evil. I have some memes there. I won't read them all to you. Cars kill a lot of people every year. And then one out of every 46 people are gonna die. But thoughts are what I'm I, I kind of most interested in spreading because I don't think there's a whole lot of thinking about cars. Oh, also, look, I was happy, proud of myself when I thought of this image. Um, so that's a car being towed, and look, it's, it's faded. But there's a human being towed by a car. And that's kind of how I feel, like the, the cars are the system and they're sort of dragging us along for the ride. Because in a lot of ways, we are addicted. We can't just stop being car. Uh, people just like I think I forget if it's heroin or what or alcohol addiction you uh, alcoholic or uh, addict will actually die if they don't have a certain amount that's why they have to titrate of it but um, cars actually restrict our freedom so I'm running very much contrary to the popular belief that cars allow us freedom they actually right now they're making me not be able to sit over there maybe I'd rather sit over there but instead I'm sitting here um, they certainly restrict the freedom of other animals. Why would humans be any different? We've certainly funneled our motions to become straight lines. And, um, you know, this is any typical road that any of you can relate to, I think, um, in your experience that really uh, restricts us. Just the way if there's a violent area in the world, like the Middle East, we're not going to go to that area. Um, because we fear being shot. So we're not going to walk into highway area. We're going to stay where we are. Um, so accidents, uh, I don't believe we have car accidents. We've had way too many to keep calling them accidents. It's a poor choice of words. And the Cars movie, I think there's a sequel, a, a third sequel. I was quite disgusted when I saw my son had it was, it was for free, so it was a hand-me-down, but still, it was a car's table and a car's chair that were found on the curb where they belong. Um, that just really upset me. So the propaganda of cars and car culture is really, uh, really caught on to where people, uh, you know, don't even think about it. So cars cause harm, better to farm. And the little boy whose third birthday should have been August the 14th, I uh, was crushed by a car, and that's who I walk, dedicate my walking to. Um, so, now I said that I, uh, what did I put in the title? I put that I, um, what did I put? i exhausted here. Oh, I, I know what I put. I put that um, golf courses of the future. 
So I always like thinking about golf courses getting overgrown or being turned back into food places of farming because they're just such a huge waste of space for such a ridiculous sport in my mind. Um, but here, I'm gonna flip it around. So I was walking by and I've been noticing lots of lots. Oh, there's our landscaper friends from before referencing them. So <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about some activism and of very various kinds of activism. One could be we try and start calling realtors and saying, don't sell this property. Look at how healthful it is. Um, so whatever property is. So now what you're looking at now is a golf course, a miniature golf course that has since gone out of business from the looks of it and is now overgrown. So um, yeah, I'll zoom in. So there's some fake fixtures. You know what? I'm going to be rebellious and trespass a little bit. All right. So, yes, here we have an overgrown golf course. I don't, I'm thinking the last time it was maintained was a year ago or so. Shit, people are gonna see me on the highway. All right, I'm gonna make this quick. I'm not super fearful of getting arrested, but be a big slowdown. Yeah, so here's the drained place where they have the fake blue water and all that. But, uh, you know, the fake grass isn't doing so well. It's not doing terrible, which means it's gonna last here a while. But um, everything, you know, the uh, plants are starting to reconquer when they're not maintained. So just imagine golf courses that are like 200 acres if they were let go. Just imagine how much life would come back and flourish there if it wasn't constantly matted down and given just the most basic grasses at a very low level. So part of me, maybe I'll even do it here, thinks about, instead of just talking about it, thinks about liberating. Oh, you know, this stuff is stuck. It's on there pretty good. But, um, you know, parking lots, the best, one of the most ethical things I think we can do is to, um, is to actually rip up gravel and parking lots, especially old abandoned ones, and let that little bit of space, whatever it is, just even a few square inches, to come emerging back, be a place for more life to get hold. That's what our, uh, as stewards, that's what I feel like our job is here. Um, that's what... Uh, for me feels like a calling so um, anyways we're going to say bye to the abandoned mini golf course I hope it doesn't sell and the land just stays here and gets to grow back um, because personally it's a lot nicer so I think this was a pretty cool spot to take a video of I, unfortunately I can't just keep making videos forever but um, I have to really get some mileage I'm always behind <laughs> always late because I set these absurd goals for myself um, but um, yeah so miniature golf course abandoned just a little glimpse into the future that I hope shows up uh, not because of apocalypse but just because of uh, choices that we could actively make to let the land do what it do its thing and there's definitely a way to fit human existence into that. Not necessarily human houses, but human existence. Maybe some tiny homes. All right. So thank you for watching. I hope I explained Carlos Carlos enough. Um, certainly to me, I feel like cars are the biggest single part of the war against the world that we're actively in. All right, bye golf course. Or hello, nature.